A lot of people are currently getting hooked on the idea of living freelancing lifestyle. Most of these people come from corporate backgrounds and from being an employee. You might be also considering the option of quitting your job and becoming a freelancer. So in this video, I'll be sharing five things that you must do before quitting your job. If you're serious about leaving your current position and pursuing freelancing career, then you must be prepared. So let's dive in. Hey guys, this is Yanis from Driven by Goal, helping you to achieve your goals. On this channel, I teach freelancers how to become more confident, driven and productive so that you can advance your freelancing career and business. If this is your first time on the channel, I would like you to do one thing. Leave a comment below with what do you do as a freelancer and just say hi. We live in an increasingly digitalized world and with advancements in technology comes changes to the way how we live our lives. And starting career is no different. A lot of people at the moment are taking opportunity of making money online. And all you need to do that is your skill, your laptop and internet connection. This is the age of online freelancing. No wonder that a lot of people are now joining the bandwagon. In fact, in America alone, it's estimated that 35% of national workforce are freelance workers. And most of these people are making decent income every year. So if you are interested in becoming a freelancer, but you're still working as a full-time employee, then this video is for you. In large-scale survey done by researchers of the freelance economy, they found out that in 2016, 55 million individuals are engaging in freelancing activities in the United States. They also expect that by 2020, 50% of national workforce of the country will be composed by freelancers. This phenomenon is expected considering the alternative lifestyle that freelancing provides. A lot of people right now are quitting their jobs to become a freelancer. Maybe that is also an alternative that you're seriously pondering. But before you join a growing economy of freelancers, you must be prepared. Freelancing is completely different from regular employment. Here are some things to think about. Your income will vary from month to month. Unlike being employed in a company where the amount of salary per month is predictable, being a freelancer might give you a varying amount of income depending on the number and quality of the projects that you have. Number two, no company benefits. One of the biggest drawbacks of being a freelancer is a lack of company benefits that you would normally have as an employee. There are no paid vacations and sick leaves, no mandatory healthcare and no bonuses at any kind. Number three, no boss to boss you around. If you're like most people, then you probably hate being bossed around by somebody else. But on the positive note, having a boss can provide you with the needed motivation to continue to strive in your job. In a freelancing, you're entirely on your own. There are still a lot of things that you need to consider, but those that I just mentioned should make you think twice before making a decision and becoming a freelancer. However, if you have sincerely decided that you want to quit your job and become a freelancer, then here are five things that you need to do. Number one is map out a clear transition plan. As I've just shown you, being a freelancer is totally different from being an corporate employee. And although as a freelancer, you've got the benefits of having more flexibility in your lifestyle and having more freedom in your work, you still have to make these trade-offs of letting go of that regular and predictable paycheck, company benefits and other support from the company. Here's where mapping out a clear transition plan is critical. A transition plan is a detailed strategy that you decide to go through in order to make sure that the switching process from employment to the freelancing is as smooth as possible. Sadly, this is one of the things most aspiring freelancers fail to do. They discover benefits of freelancing and seize advantages of what it offers. And they'll quickly jump on a train without giving it a careful thought or analysis. They'll quit their jobs and immediately start to hunt for the project. Two months later, they're dead broke, sending out resumes to different companies just to be employed again. Thus, you should start with a clear transition plan first. Number two, prepare an emergency fund. Establishing an emergency fund is extremely important, especially if you're entirely new to the freelancing due to the risk involved. If you're using third-party platforms like Upwork or freelancer.com, then finding first paying clients might take days or even weeks. So you must be financially prepared. Number three, 
is do your own research and talk to other freelancers. Now, another thing that you need to do before you quit your job and become a freelancer is to talk with other freelancers. There are a ton of tiny things that you need to know before you go freelance and the best way to find out about them is to talk with already existing freelancers and as well as do your own research. Try to search for the skills that are in line with your education and passion. If you think you lack a skill, then I would suggest to enroll in some kind of online course to hone your ability. And lastly, have a look into the marketing a little bit and how to talk with the clients. As a freelancer, you are your own business. So you must learn how to sell yourself to the potential prospects. It might take a long time to do all these things. So to cut the process short, just talk to the seasoned freelancers. And if they're willing, pick their brain and ask the questions. Learn from their experiences and ask for practices that work. Number four, choosing a freelancing niche. After getting a general idea about freelancing, it is time to choose your niche. And here is another thing that a lot of aspiring freelancers miss. I believe that a lot of individuals have a raffle contest mindset. It is a perspective that about thinking that by increasing the entry sent or the tickets purchased, you're increasing your chances to win the raffle. So they start to work on a lots of different niches, hoping that one day they will land that perfect job. However, being everybody to everyone will turn you into nobody. It is hard to be jack of all trades when it comes to the freelancing because it diminishes your expertise and the value of what you can do. Therefore, before becoming a freelancer, choose a specific niche that you will focus on. Choose something that will challenge your growth and make use of your skills. Number five, do a part-time freelancing. Instead of just quitting your job and starting to look for the projects, I suggest that you start a part-time freelancing. Test the waters out, get a couple clients, sign them up and get a job done. I know this is not gonna give you a full uh, freedom of uh, and, and freelancing benefits, but at least you're gonna be able to go through the whole process of signing up a client, getting a job done, then getting a feedback from the client, working on a revision and submitting a final project. And this is gonna give you exact process and the feel of how easy or difficult it is actually to be a freelancer. So these were my top five things to do before quitting your job and becoming a full-time freelancer. Indeed, these things are gonna take some time, but it's better to be prepared rather than go all in and then find yourself a couple of months later totally broke and looking for the ways to be hired by previous employer. If you're a freelancer and if you want to become more productive, driven and confident, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This was me, Yanis from Driven by Goal, helping you to achieve your goals. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. This phenomenon, phenomenon is expected. This phenomenon is means I, I'm not sure what that means right that's it um, till the next time GoPro stop recording